Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, a.k.a. The Venom Vlog. And I'm going to keep my voice down a little bit because my roommate is trying to go to bed. And I don't want to keep him up, obviously. He's got work in the morning. But this is kind of the only time I can record this because when I wake up, I'm going to have to edit it and get it ready to post before I go to work. So uh, so this is kind of my only time to do this. Uh, and I got, I'm taking a break from writing this week on my book. So it's given me more time to make these videos for you guys. So I hope you're liking them. Uh, luckily, we've gotten some news and some things I dug up on IMDb be this week uh, but today actually I want to do something that I've wanted to do for a while which is do um, I guess comments like reply to comments like a lot of times I don't get a lot of comments on my videos um, I'm still like a small channel but when I do it it's always really cool and I like to have interactions with people uh, that was kind of the whole point of doing this channel was to find other fans of things that I like too and I've tried really hard on this channel to grow it on a single thing you know like be like either a transformer channel which is what i originally started at but then i always come back to the same problem i don't have money to keep buying transformer toys um i tried to do star wars stuff for a while movie reviews and ultimately everything just kind of fell apart because a lot of that stuff revolved around money and this is nice because i actually just get to do news i get to talk about you know updates for this movie i get to share like life experiences with you guys I get to tie it all in with a character that I really love. So this is kind of working out really well for me and I'm digging it and I'm glad you guys are too because we're already in just like two months. We're already over 30 episodes. So that's fantastic and I'm I'm happy to put in the time to do this if you guys are enjoying them so much. So again, make sure you go to us on Facebook. We just created a page. If you're liking what you see here, go and like us over there. And if you are liking us here, hopefully you're subscribed. I see my subscriber count going up every couple days and it's really nice. So thank you. The other reason I want to make this video is because I'm actually, overall, I've had this channel I think for like four years now, and um, we're over 100,000 views. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, no way. Like I've accumulated over, between all my videos, 100,000 views from the Seek and Destroy show to like random one-offs and Transformer reviews and everything, all the way to this. So all of you out there who've been here since the beginning, thank you so much. And all the new people, I really, really appreciate you being here. And that's what I wanted to do today to show my appreciation, even though I responded in you know in text form and so to some of these uh comments that were made i did want to like kind of embellish or, or kind of elaborate on things that uh they embellish is a bad word for that to uh, elaborate on maybe where i'm coming from with some of my responses um so yeah we'll get into that in a second but i did also we did have one little thing that happened on instagram uh tom hardy posted this picture here with Avi Arad, and it looks like he's back on set. They're back in filming mode, because I remember they took a break during the Christmas holiday and stuff, and it looks like they're coming back, they're back in Atlanta, and he's in his trailer, and you can see he's got like some weird pants on. Um, like they look kind of oh, a little almost like, a, you know, military-ish, if I dare to say, because I know in the beginning, I was kind of railing against the idea of Eddie Brock being like a military person, uh, but actually I've been reading some of the Carnage, Jerry Conway Carnage books recently um, to catch up on something that I'm going to do in February with Carnage on this channel, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you, Car you Carnage fans out there, I'm definitely going to do something really nice for you guys and, and just pump out a bunch of cool stuff for you, hopefully, and hopefully interviews and other things that I could try to line up, but anyway, that aside, but in Jerry Conway's run, uh, Eddie Brock actually is working with a military group, and he uh, he's coming in, he's got a big gun, and he's kind of their backup, like in case their plan goes to crap, and John Jameson can't help them stop Carnage, uh, and their new sound technology can't stop Carnage, they send Eddie Brock in, who has, a, who has the toxin symbiote at this point, and I'm actually unfamiliar with this. I've been following the character for years, but there is a gray area where I, I'd lost track of Eddie Brock, and I was mostly just following where the suit went, and I wasn't following where the, where the character went. And and so, you know, as I've been catching up on my research and stuff for this show, I've been reading Jerry Conway's Carnage Run, which is fantastic. If you're out there and you're not buying it, pick it up. The trades are on sale right now um, online. So, uh, and, and by the way, we'll get to the comments soon, but I will do a video on what you should be reading if you're a Venom fan and stuff that's out there in print. We got a request for it, so we'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, but I've been reading that Eddie Brock has actually done some kind of you know some military stuff ish stuff so um yeah i you know foot in mouth that's what that is anyway so that's the picture and you know and make sure you're following tom hardy and all the other links that are down here on the uh the chiron there uh make sure you're following all those places on instagram and uh, and again give us some love on facebook if you can so what we're going to do today i'm going to just start i'm not going to go back too far because um and I feel bad about that because there's been a lot of people who've commented on the channel over the years and I've always meant to do a video like this and I never did. So we're just going to start here and I'm just going to go back about a week. So let's see, we have, uh, 
We have here uh, Nova Dragon a week ago said um, he was commenting on episode 24. We were talking about the um, Venom in the animated series of Spider-Man. And, uh, and I was going over like the storyline from that version of Venom. And Nova Dragon says, watching this makes me wonder why they never went forward with a full-on Venom series, Netflix or animated. So live action or animated on Netflix. Um, and that's actually pretty interesting. Uh, we talked it out in the comments, so you can always go back in that video and see what we were saying in full. But um, I kind of agree, like in, to an extent, I feel like Venom's always one of those characters that it would have been cool to see a series of, because you could have really dove into the, the psychology of, of the, the duality of the character. Um, when you bring in Cletus Cassidy, you could have someone like really sink their teeth into that role and kind of flesh him out, uh, pun intended. Uh, but uh, I can see why also. I mean, the budget for the symbiote and everything Thing, it would cost a pretty penny penny if you look at the marvel netflix shows to me i think they got cheaper and cheaper like i thought daredevil was great and even daredevil season two was great i thought jessica jones was shot well and luke cage was shot well you know for the most part um but after like it started to d deteriorate after that and then we got iron fist which i really just thought was a cheap show and then defenders and i i, I just wouldn't want those people in charge with that budget making something and then you also saw inhumans recently too so you take characters that might need a visual boost and you don't give them that because you don't have the budget that could hurt the show so i'm, I'm kind of with you i would in a dream world i would love to see any comic book turn into a tv show because i think that's the format comic books are you know, uh, periodically they come out every month. They're kind of like episodes in a way, and they kind of lend themselves to TV transfers more than they do movie transfers. Uh, I think it, they would have a lot more success. But again, the budget's always way lower. You know, if you if you could make a TV series with like a hundred million dollars and make like eight episodes of Venom, sure that would be great. But I don't see anyone really doing that anytime soon. So, because um, I don't think they, there's a way to get that money back basically just on views alone. So. I don't know, maybe one day we'll get there because eventually we're going to have to because TV is where a lot of things are moving to nowadays and, and unfortunately theaters are suffering from lack of sale you know, ticket sales. So um, something's got to change. Maybe that's the change. I don't know. But you guys let me know what you think of uh, Nova Dragon's comments and if you have any response to that, let me know down below. Okay, the next comment here is uh, from Demona938. By the way, I'm a big Gargoyles fan, so when I saw your, your name and your picture, I got really excited. I was like, hey, cool, a Gargoyles fan. Um, she says, I was hoping, and she said this on episode, I think it's 19 or 10. I can't see the, it's what we're we talking about, um, Scott Hayes being cast as uh, Trees. And she says, I was kind of hoping Scott Hayes would play Carnage. He looks like him, Cletus, I mean, from the comics. Very disappointed. I, I like Woody Harrelson, but I really don't want him playing Carnage. He's too old for me. And you can, again, you can read our whole uh, back and forth there, but she brings up a good point. Um, I was kind of banking on Scott Hayes, too. I, I like his acting. He's an up-and-coming actor, but he's done some really great stuff, really interesting stuff lately, and I would have liked to seen him play a character like Carnage and see his range as an actor um, go in that direction, uh, but at the same time, you know, they cast him for the part they thought was right for him in the movie, and I'm guessing, based off of banter and conversation I've heard between Atlanta filming and Marvelous Realm and everything on Instagram, or on Twitter, I mean, I've seen them say that um, Cletus Cassidy this isn't confirmed, this is just them talking, but that Cletus Cassidy does not have a big part in the movie. And so if Woody Harrelson just coming in to play Cletus, which we still don't know yet, we don't know who Woody's playing, but if he's just playing a cameo of Cletus and they're setting that up for a sequel, you know, that could be cool. But I personally, I like the idea of an older Cletus because I feel like it would be neat to have someone who's who has like 20 he's been in jail for like 20 or 30 years and he has killed and he has like a long list of people he's killed um and he's serving like a life sentence and he's only halfway through it and it just build that like age sometimes you know you'll be like all right you know, a lot of people in jail after years they might you know in, you know go a softer route not a softer route that's a weird way to put it but like they may like repent for their sins if they if they sin because you know a lot of times people go to jail for and they're innocent uh, but Cletus we know is a bad person you know he's a fictional bad person and uh, so sometimes jail you know kind of changes you. you you know read the bible you, you get into different things like that sometimes it makes you harder you know you, you come out di you know different and you're and, and on the other side of the spectrum so for me I think knowing Cletus 
going through jail and then them just keep putting him in isolation, keep putting him in isolation. Every time he's around other inmates, he's just a danger to everybody. Um, just And then maybe to the point where they transfer him to a psych ward, like Ravencroft psych ward, like they did in the comics. Like, I like the idea of someone who's older, who has been through all that, and he has all that behind him um, that has led to okay now there's no doubt this guy is psychotic so it's like ah oh, someone young you're kind of like ah oh, they're maybe they're too sweet they're too whatever uh, and i know there's reasons for that like she says you know there's like you know the characters are people like Dahmer and, and and bundy and these guys who look like regular everyday dudes and they kind of have like a charm to them um and uh, and they could lure you in that could be a one take on cletus cassidy for sure but f for me if it turns out to be Woody, which we still don't know if it is, but if it turns out, I wouldn't mind it so much. Um, but I definitely, she brought up a lot of good points, Demona, in her comments. So Demona, thank you so much for commenting. Um, this one's a real easy one. This is Will Spider 5 He just says, I'm your 700th subscriber. So Will, thank you for helping us cross that finish line. That is really awesome of you. And thank you. I'm going to have another comment that you left at the end of this video. Um, We'll talk about soon but yeah dude thank you for being our number 700 i really appreciate that and thanks for commenting on that video um it, i think it was episode 13 of our show of the venom vlog so big shout out to you for for jumping in and watching some of our older stuff and liking enough to subscribe we really appreciate that brenda brooks she says uh venom and x-men equals heaven so to speak <laughs> and i said yeah definitely my kind of heaven uh brenda brooks is really nice she is someone who is a big fan of tom hardy and she commented on one of my first videos when i posted these um back in november i think my first episode and she was saying how she was excited to see me um you know track my health uh to have this goal of losing weight and being inspired by watching Tom Hardy work out to get in shape for the Venom role and using that as you know my excuse to like use to lose 20 pounds before the movie comes out and that's the goal of this channel and but it's not also just you know following my physical health and me trying to um lose lose some weight uh, but it's also about me focused on my mental health about me getting to a better place and uh, and thankfully all of you guys have been so supportive that uh, it, it's been helping big time um and, uh, but I'm also got to be careful of getting codependent on something like that. Uh, I, I do want to keep this just being fun and this being an outlet for me to talk about a character, a fictional character that I love, uh, to give you guys the movie news more importantly than anything, uh, but then just give you like a, a touch of how I'm doing and everything like that. So I, I'll put those stuff in. I know a lot of people have been asking why my intros, they don't have me like working out anymore or taking walks with my dog anymore. Um, it's just because right now I don't have time to shoot a lot of that stuff because of work and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and how busy and crazy my life's been lately. So right now I'm just focused on, you know, giving you guys the movie news and, uh, and then we'll pepper that stuff in later, but I am down to 201 again, which is great. So those of you who are concerned about that, I, I, I will at least put them at the front of every episode. So, you know, where I'm at, I'm trying to break that 200 though. I'm really trying to get down under 200. So when we lose our first 10 pounds, I'm definitely going to do a big celebration episode. Maybe I'll eat like a whole cake on camera or something. <laughs> um, and then gain like five pounds back. That would be terrible. But Brenda, thank you so much for supporting this channel. I really, really appreciate it. And thanks for always commenting. Uh, it's always nice to see you comment in the comment section and uh, and for supporting me for you know from the beginning. It really does mean a lot. The next comment we got was on episode 21, and this was the Life Foundation photos um, that uh, I think it was Jeremy was a guy on. Uh, on Twitter who was posting the pictures he worked in the building he saw them he posted them um, so thank you out there Jeremy go back and watch that video I think I put a link to his Twitter page on there uh, this is from critique nut and he says I must say being a huge venom fan I have been following your vlogs and you are doing a great job in covering everything uh, with your coverage I need to know what I have missed out on the movie I am so excited for it what's more I have started working out after a two-month break just like you Hopefully the movie will do great. Please keep continuing your vlogs. As my thanks, you've just earned a subscriber. Also, if you have the time, do follow my blog, uh, www.critiquenut.blogspot.com. And I'll have that link right here so you can see it on screen. Make sure you go check out Critique Nut, uh, where he has also provided movie updates on Venom. Cheers from India. Critique Nut. Thank you so much. Uh, con good luck with the uh, losing weight too. Um, I'll definitely be there for support if you need me. I'm here. Uh, just reach out to me. And uh, and I I actually did check out your blog spot. Really cool stuff. So everyone out there, make sure you go to Critique Nuts Blog Spot. I wanted to get to this comment because I was like, hey, I want to give this guy a plug. 
any friend uh, from anywhere in the world is awesome. And to know that I reached someone in India is freaking crazy and super cool. So thank you so much. Actually, another person who wrote me is Sonic Vlogs. Uh, he's clearly a big Sonic the Hedgehog fan. And he wrote on episode, I think it was like 26. It was the Tom Hardy workout video. Uh, not the first one we did, but it was like the updated version that we got from the like that health website. And Sonic said, hey man, I just want to say thank you for subscribing to my, my YouTube channel. Uh, that's too sweet of you. Thank you. And uh, that's no problem at all. I mean, if you guys are out there and you, um, you do something that if you watch my channel and you're like, hey, I think Zeke would like this let me know please if, if it's something you guys are doing it's something you have a passion project of your own kind of like i do with this show let me know i like supporting other people it, it's really i mean we're not going to get anywhere by ignoring each other so if you got something you want to share with me please do and sonic vlogs thank you so much um everyone i'll put a link to sonic vlogs and i'll you know what i'll go ahead and put um critique nut i'll just put their links in the description box below so go down there and click on their links and subscribe to those guys Here's one of the other comments I wanted to get to. This is the Unforgiven 259. He just left this like 11 hours ago, at least from the recording, um, on episode 17, where we talked about the Vengeance of Venom trade paperback. And uh, Unforgiven says, hello, I've been watching your show and I really enjoy it. Thank you so much. I am new to reading comics and have been having trouble finding a jumping on point for Venom. I was wondering if you could make a video or list for me on all the Venom trade paperbacks that are currently available and able to order in which to read them in. Uh, I recently picked up Edge of Venomverse as a place to start for current comics, and there is a list in the back of the book, but I don't know if that is all of them. Any help would be great, thanks. Uh, yes, and as I said in my response to you, uh, because that's the first request I think I've got for this show um, to make a video on something. So I will definitely do it. I can't ignore the first one. That would make me a total D-bag. Uh, so Unforgiven, yes. Um, this weekend, I'm off on Saturday now. I had Sunday off, but I switched with someone at work. So now I have Saturday off. So the first thing I'm going to do when I wake up Saturday morning is I'm going to make that list and I'm going to make that video for you. And it's going to tell you um, where to start. And I did mention in the comments that um, we're actually going kind of in chronological order. Uh, so if you ever see a video that says like breaking down or discussion on my show if you see an episode with those words in it that means we're talking about one of the comic books and we've already talked about the birth of venom trade paperback and the vengeance of venom trade paperback and i would say start there the birth of venom talks about how the suit came to earth in the secret wars comic which is back here on the wall or right there that's the first appearance of the black costume so you get that first book in Birth of Venom and it tells you like fills in the gaps of when Spider-Man had the suit and what he used it for and how it started to corrupt him and you see it leave Spider-Man and go to Eddie Brock so you see his whole origin and then like his first few appearances in the comics after that so all that's in Birth of Venom and then Vengeance of Venom is the follow-up trade paperback these are both in print right now and they're on Kindle I think they're like seven dollars on Kindle if you just want the Kindle version but if you live near a comic book store definitely support your local comic shop go down there and pick them up uh, both trade are great so birth of venom and then vengeance of venom start there and i will make my video and have more for you very soon so these current comments i definitely want to get to because this has sparked some uh some you know my wheels turning because as i was making those videos earlier um i had just got that news so i didn't really have time to digest it as I was recording and it wasn't until I was editing those videos that I was having time to digest and then I went to work and was thinking about it all day and I was like oh my god like there's so much I want to say about the the casting of Scream and the casting of Reed Scott as Pat Mulligan so we're going to get into that right now uh, Will Spider 5 our 700 subscriber uh, says I'm not sure how I feel about Scream being in the film this is Venom's first movie and it seems part of the story will cover his origin so adding in more symbiotes possibly Carnage 2 worries me. It reminds me of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, where Sony went full speed ahead on the Sinister Six and started throwing way too much stuff into that movie. And Will, that is exactly the thought I had when I was editing the video. I was editing and listening to myself talking about the, the Scream character and uh, and then also the uh, the Reed Scott one, because I shot those back to back. And then as I was editing the Scream one, I was thinking about that and then possibly Toxin and maybe Carnage. Um, but I did hear that Carnage may be just a setup for the second film. Again, that's just Atlanta filming and Marvelous Realm talking on, on Twitter about it. Um, so I don't know. None of that's confirmed. And I don't want to just, you know, take everything at, at their word. But they seem like trustworthy guys. And I like their Twitter. Even though I'm not on Twitter, I like going and checking them once a day to see what they've posted. So, yeah, I kind of get where you're coming from there. And, and the fact that they're, you know, 
thinking about Scream. And again, none of that's confirmed. It was just on the IMDb page. Could be wrong, could change. We don't know. Uh, but that's just information as I'm getting it. And then if it's wrong later, we'll make an update video on it. Uh, but that's what it looks like to me in here. By the way, the people who were wondering about the screenshots, I forgot to edit them into the other video. So boom, boom. There are the screenshots of the casting of Reed Scott and um, and the girls playing. Uh, it was Michelle Lee and Sailor LaRoque, I think, um, playing the, the respective characters of Scream and Pat Mulligan. So those are the screenshots of IMDb page. In case those change, just so you know, I didn't make it up. I'm not going crazy. Uh, at least I don't think I am. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, there's a possibility of, of too many Sims on the dance floor. Definitely could be a thing. So uh, yeah, I hope that's not the case. But um, but if it is, maybe we should maybe we should make a song about it. Too many Sims on the dance floor. Too many Sims on the dance floor. Too many Sims. Too many Sims on the dance floor. Too many Sims on the dance floor. Too many men, too many boys, too many misters, not enough sisters, too much time on too many hands, not enough ladies, too many mans. Oh, anyway, so uh, yeah, Will Spider, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, I hope it doesn't suffer from Amazing Spider-Man 2 Syndrome. That would be terrible. Um, I, I, I just can only hope that doesn't happen. But it is a lot of the same producers and people behind Amazing Spider-Man working on this. So it's. Uh, I'm not going to say that I'm going to rule that out, but I really, really hope that it's nothing like that. Dag, D-A-G, who has a great image of Venom for his profile pic, says Clayton Crane is amazing. His art and comics, especially Venom vs. Carnage, is just outstanding. Been a fan of his work since Carnage and Carnage USA series, uh, which are written by Zeb Wells, which we're going to talk about in our Carnage stuff that we're going to do in February. Uh, so, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that announcement when I get there. But Clayton Crane, you're right, Dag is the man. I love Clayton Crane's artwork. Uh, the Venom vs. Carnage crossover, we're gonna, the miniseries, we're going to talk about that. That's the first appearance of Toxin, so now we're definitely going to do that and talk about that because now that we know Pat Mulligan is possibly in this movie, again, the rumored asterisk is next to him, but, you know, I'm thinking he might be playing Pat. He looks kind of like him, too. I never thought about it, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you're right. Clayton Crane is amazing, and if you're out there and you've never seen his artwork, Definitely check it out. Look up Clayton Crane if you see any original art for, uh, artwork from him. Or if you go to a convention and you see him, definitely buy a print or buy something. His stuff is amazing. Andrew Kai, who's been a supporter a long time on here, has says, uh, I try to support my local comic book store, but the travel distances are a hassle. It makes me wish that I lived next door to one. You know, there was times in my life, and I put this in my comment, where I didn't live in a city with a comic store or it was too far away or whatever. And what I did was I actually got a real subscription to comics. They would come in the mail. And every day, or not every day, but like every month, I think I ordered two. It was Sensational Spider-Man because Mike Rowingo was drawing it. And he, when he jumped on Amazing Spider-Man, because I liked his stuff with like Impulse and some of the other stuff that he had done. And when he jumped on Sensational Spider-Man, I was in love with the way he drew Spider-Man. Peter looked like age appropriate uh, but when he was spider-man he looked like a kid having fun um, Mike has since passed but he uh, passed away unfortunately but he is one of my favorite comic book artists of all time and uh, his art on spider-man was amazing and I couldn't live without it so I begged my mom to spend like 30 bucks to get a, a one-year subscription to sensational spider-man and I would just rush every the first week of every month I would rush to my uh, mailbox and after school I'd come home and just be like oh please please be in there and every time I got an issue even though it was bent up and crinkled and sometimes ripped um, I still would bring it home and just cherish it looking at his artwork meant that much to me and that's when I knew I wanted to get into comic books for sure I think I was like 16 or 17 at the time um, maybe 16 and I was in love I just loved seeing spider-man in that way and brought to life and it made me care about characters like the prowler um, and uh, and and paste pot Pete and some other characters that appeared in that run and swarm a cool villain uh, made of a bunch of bumblebees uh, that, that come together so yeah just a lot of cool stuff so I would say if you're not near a comic store you could do the subscription thing I think Marvel still does that um, with some of their books and I think Venom might be one of them uh, and then also you could um, you could actually do the digital thing. So if you're not near a comic store, there's that. And then there's always Amazon if you just want the trade paperbacks and uh, just catch up on the stories that way. We have one more comment from Demona here. She says, uh, pretty much along with uh, Will Spider said, she says, so okay, so why is there two Donna Diegos in this film? 
This movie's plot seems to be getting confusing, and I think it's a waste of time adding in other symbiotes like Lasher, Riot, Hybrid, Agony, Phage, and Toxin in the film. The main symbiote should just be Venom and Carnage only. Uh, wasn't Craven, Chameleon, and Morbius supposed to be in this as well? Uh, there was expectations months ago of those three being in the film. And yes, there has been a lot of rumors going around. I don't know which one of them are true. Sony really wants to start a universe, another shared universe. Uh, we need another one of those, like we need a hole in the head. Uh, a lot of them don't succeed because a lot of times when you plan for things like that, it causes you to make mistakes. It causes you to make mistakes that you normally wouldn't make in your movie. And the thing about making movies is when I come, every time I think of like a solid comic book movie, I think of movies like The Crow and Blade. Uh, to me, those two movies were rated R. They were pretty faithful to the source material, but they changed enough in it that maybe someone who didn't read the comic might appreciate the film um, in a different way than someone who appreciates the comic book. And, uh, and they also uh, just kept their head down and focused on the movie in front of them, and they made a good movie. They were just like, well, let's just make a good movie. If something happens of this, we'll make more, because The Crow was originally planned to be a trilogy. Of course, Brandon Lee passed away, and then they, that those plans went away, but still, even with the trilogy planned, the movie was pretty much like, this is how the movie's gonna be. Like, we're gonna stick to this script. There were things cut out of the movie and things they, they couldn't shoot, obviously, but for the most part, uh, I think the only thing that would have changed is that Brandon Lee's character, Eric Draven, wouldn't have died at the end. He would have still stuck around on Earth, and then so they could do the trilogy. That would have been the only thing they changed. And if you look at that first movie, he kills everybody. So it's kind of like, well, what's the second one about? <laughs> and that's the problem you should face when you make a sequel, like Blade did. They kill Whistler in the first movie, and then at the end, Blade is like, no, I don't want the, the antidote. I'm just going to go fight more vampires. Uh, I killed the Blood God, but there's still vampires out there. And you're just like, okay, what do we do for the next one? We got to bring Whistler back. We got to do all this stuff. And that's that's the beauty of that's the, when you paint yourself in the corner and you find ways out of it. Uh, that's the point in a way. Uh, so when you plan for things, I agree. So the Craven, the Morbius, the Chameleon stuff. Um, yeah, I heard those rumors too. I think Morbius, that rumor is still going around. Uh, Silver and Black, which is like the, the Black Cat Silver Sable movie. It starts filming, I think, in like February or March. And, uh, and that is supposed to be tied into this Venom universe. So I don't know if we're going to get a cameo of them in this film or mention of the, the wild pack or anything like that, like as mercenaries that would hunt down the symbiote, if it's gonna be a post credit scene, like I have no idea. But I hope whatever they have planned, it doesn't change this movie. I hope this movie is just a good beginning, middle and end story, and maybe one or two little threads that they could touch off of later, but mostly just keep it you know, clean and simple. Keep your head down and make this movie. And sometimes when you think clean and simple, you think, all right, well, we got to throw everything in the kitchen sink in. We got to have Venom fight Carnage because this is, might be our only time we get to make the movie. We got to have the five symbiotes. We got to, you know, and I agree with you. It's too much. And I hope we don't get that with this film. So the Scream thing and the uh, Pat Mulligan thing, luckily Pat Mulligan is just listed as Pat Mulligan. Reed Scott is just playing Pat Mulligan. Didn't say slash toxin on it. So we may not get toxin in this movie. Could just be a nod to the fans like hey we know who pat mulligan is we needed a cop character we put him in here for a few scenes that's all he is that could all that could be what he is in the movie uh, we won't know obviously till we see it or see a trailer and can speculate some more uh, but as far as scream yeah they listed two actors uh actresses playing her and i don't know what that's about i don't know if michelle lee is just like doing stunts although they normally would put that in parentheses um sailor laroque I don't know if she's just playing the scream part of her. Um, I have no idea. I'm, I'm just as confused as everybody else. So um, until we get that confirmed, until IMDb updates again, uh, and we get more information, we're not going to know for sure. But yeah, if it's two actors playing that character, I just want to know how they're going to do it. Um, hopefully they didn't like cast one of them and then and then not like their performance and cast the other one. I've seen that happen on IMDb before. Yeah, IMDb before where they have the same like two actors playing one role they're like yeah we didn't really like that actor so they're gone and we reshot the scenes with this actress um hopefully that's not the case because I think Michelle Lee's awesome and Sailor looks like Scream and she's been in a couple indie movies I saw on her IMDb page so I don't know much about her she's new to the the Venom family I guess so I'll try to do more research figure out other movies see her performances in them and I'll check back with you guys soon 
All right, in our last two comments, uh, Will Spider asks, or he says, uh, wow, if they put Tox in this movie, it would have to be as a cameo or a small role to set up for future movies. Really hope we get an official casting announcement from Sony soon. So apparently I am, uh, IGN is actually going to post something this week, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. I don't know when, uh, but they're going to post something. As soon as they do, I'll try to react to it and get it up to you guys as soon as I can. But with my work schedule over the next few days, you probably won't see it till like closer to midnight or something like that. Um, so I'll, I'll do as, as the best I can, but apparently they're going to release official movie stuff soon. So everything we've seen, all the, the behind the scenes footage, the, the photos taken by Atlanta Filming and uh, Just Jared and all the information we've got from Marvelous Realm and other people online and the Instagram accounts of Tom Hardy and the Venom movie and everything like that, like all that has been kind of, I mean, some of that's been official, but most of it hasn't been officially licensed, released by Sony stuff. So apparently this week we're going to get something from Sony uh, through IGN. And it's, I don't know if it's a first look. I don't know if it's official set photos. I don't know what it is yet. It could be a casting. They could just be, all right, here's our cast. Here's a poster with all six main people in it. And it's going to tell you who they're playing. We don't know yet. It could be that something that simple. It could be the first look at Venom. We have no idea. So um, when that drops, I promise you guys, I will get it to you. And make sure you follow me on Facebook because I will probably post it there first. Because if I'm at work and I can't make a video on it right away, that's what I'll probably do is just post it immediately to Facebook uh, and probably Instagram too. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. And our last comment tonight comes from someone who just followed us on Facebook. Big shout out to Cody Ellsmore who left this comment on episode 32. He says, so fucking excited. Ah, <laughs> and honestly, Cody, I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm getting excited for this movie. I've been excited. I'm getting more and more excited. And to see this kind of enthusiasm from you guys, it really means a lot. So definitely keep that excitement going. We'll do more videos very, very soon. Hopefully that IGN thinks uh, drops tomorrow or the next day so I can have more videos for you guys. Other than that, thank you so much for supporting me. Thanks for the 100,000 views all the years of watching my channel. Thanks to the new people here for supporting Venom Vlog. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you in the future. Peace.